Your Majesty, over to you. Mr. Sorry. No. Mr. President, uh, thank you for your gracious hospitality accorded to me and uh, my delegation today. My visit today carries um, an added meaning as our countries this year mark 75 years of exemplary strategic partnership. However, we had hoped we would be marking this major milestone during better circumstances in my region and the world. Unfortunately, one of the most devastating wars in recent history continues to unfold in Gaza as we speak. Nearly 100,000 people have been killed, injured, or are missing. The majority are women and children. We cannot afford an Israeli attack on Rafah. It is certain to produce another humanitarian catastrophe. The situation is already unbearable for over a million people who have been pushed into Rafah since the war started. We cannot stand by and let this continue. We need a lasting ceasefire now. This war must end. We must urgently and immediately work to ensure the sustainable delivery of sufficient aid to Gaza through all possible entry points and mechanisms. And I thank you, Mr. President, for your support on this. Restrictions on vital relief aid and medical items are leading to inhumane conditions. No other UN agency can do what UNRWA is doing in helping the people of Gaza through this humanitarian catastrophe. Its work in other areas of operation, especially in Jordan, where 2.3 million are registered, is also vital. It is imperative that UNRWA continues to receive the support it needs to carry out its mandate. The potential threat of Palestinian displacement beyond the borders of Gaza and the West Bank is something we view with extreme concern and cannot be allowed. At the same time, we must ignore, we must not ignore the situation in the West Bank and in the holy sites in Jerusalem. Nearly 400 Palestinians have been killed in the West Bank since October 7th, including almost 100 children and over 4,000 injured. Continued escalations by extremist settlers in the West Bank and Jerusalem's holy sites and the expansion of illegal settlements will unleash chaos on the entire region. The vast majority of Muslim worshippers are not being allowed to enter Al-Aqsa Mosque. Christian churches have also voiced concerns about increasing and unprecedented restrictions and threats. It is also important to stress that the separation of the West Bank and Gaza cannot be accepted. Seven decades of occupation, death and destruction have proven beyond any doubt that there can be no peace without a political horizon. Military and security solutions are not the answer. They can never bring peace. Civilians on both sides continue to pay for this protracted conflict with their lives. All attacks against innocent civilians, women and children, including those of October 7th, cannot be accepted by any Muslim, as I had previously stressed. We must make sure the horrors of the past few months since October 7th are never repeated nor accepted by any human being. We must together, along with Arab partners and the international community, step up efforts to reach a ceasefire in Gaza and immediately start working to create a political horizon that leads to a just and comprehensive peace on the basis of the two-state solution. An independent, sovereign, and viable Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. But living side by side with Israel in peace and security, this is the only solution that will guarantee peace and security for the Palestinians and the Israelis, as well as the entire region. Your leadership, my dear friend, Mr. President, is key to addressing this conflict, and Jordan is ready to work, as always, with you towards peace. Thank you.